Okay, this right here proves uh, why uh, reopening schools or ha well having in-person schooling is uh, a real big problem. A student who uh, tested positive for coronavirus goes back to school and potentially infects various other students and teachers with it. Um, how many more students uh, have coronavirus, don't know about it, or uh, are in the midst of getting tested and go to school and infect other people? And then they will go on to infect even more people. And it's going to make uh, keeping this pandemic contained even harder. First, a school district in Indiana didn't even make it past the first day before a student there tested positive for coronavirus. That set off alarm bells and uh, prompted plenty of headlines around the country. Dr. Harold Olin is superintendent of the Greenfield Central Community School Corporation in Greenfield, Indiana. Good to have you with us this morning. Uh, as you know, I'm sure, because I'm sure you got some calls, that headline did really send off, set off alarm bells for a lot of folks. And as I understand it, you found out about the positive test, not from this student or the student's family, but from from the health department, correct? That is correct. You know, we started school on Thursday, the 30th, and we'd been planning for that day for many months. So we obviously were a little disappointed when we received a phone call from the health department telling us that one of our students had tested positive. The student had tested a few days before. The family had not waited to get the results, mm -hmm. and the student came to school. So as soon as we were notified by the health department, we did isolate the student obviously got the student out of the, the school as quickly as we could. We began to initiate our protocols for contact tracing. So we went to uh, each of the teachers that the student had been a part of, looked at seating charts, actually went into classrooms to see who had been within six feet of that student for more than 15 minutes. And unfortunately, we had to make a number of phone calls that evening to families to let them know that children would need to be uh, excluded from school for 14 days. Not exactly the, the start we were looking for in that specific school. But you haven't had, the upside is, at least as of today, I understand that there haven't been any additional cases connected to this student, correct? There have not been. And we've asked families and staff, for that matter, to do a self-screening each day. So if they have symptoms, COVID symptoms, or if they've been around someone who's been identified as positive, certainly ask them not to attend school. Mm -hmm. And our families have really uh, done a nice job of that for the most part. You, you talk about, you know, you had a plan in place, uh, and as most districts and schools do. I know we just got our proposal, so we know what the plan is in our school district. Um, but I'm curious, too, just your message to the other families. The fact that this family did send their child to get a test still didn't have the results. We know that there is an issue with a lag time and results across the country, uh, but still sent their child to school. Uh, was that, did that come up as a discussion with the family about potentially putting so many other people at risk? Well, certainly it, it did. And again, I use that term disappointing because it is, you, obviously as a school corporation, we want to control the variables that we can control. And we've been working on this since really in late March, early April, and we will continue to control the variables we can control. We need families to control the variable they can control, which mm -hmm. is that self-screening piece. And again, it's probably it could work out to be a good thing and that I think other families, not only in Greenfield, but I hope across the nation realize the importance of that self-screening piece, that there are responsibilities really on both sides as a school corporation and as families. How did your staff react to news of the positive test? You know, I, certainly disappointment. And I did speak with a couple of the teachers specifically at that junior high the following morning. And I think they're rolling with it very well. I'm pleased to say that none of our, our staff members were uh, noted as a direct contact, meaning they were not within six feet for 15 minutes or longer. I think it does help them knowing we have protocols in place. We've been working with the state health department, our county health department, certainly the Department of Education, and creating these protocols. In fact, we had about 65 people who helped us uh, draft the protocols we have in place here. So we feel like you know, teachers, counselors, coaches, they've all had a, a voice in this. 
we've certainly listened to our families as well. We did a couple surveys over the summer getting input from them in terms of what they would expect from us. So I feel like people in our community feel like their voices were heard. Mm -hmm. Now, to answer your question more specifically, certainly that does create additional anxiety for some of our teachers who were kind of on the fence about being back anyway, and we're certainly trying to, to work through a few of those. Um, a, a superintendent from Arizona wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post talking about the possibility of a safe return to school, in which he called it a fantasy, saying kids will get sick or worse, family members will die, teachers will die, saying it is just not safe. Each district, each municipality is dealing with different issues, including the community spread, the rate of transmission in their area. Um, but, but looking forward, I mean, what do you envision, uh, you know, in, in Greenfield, especially after what you saw on day one, the protocols you had in place appear to have worked. I know you said that this, you know, maybe could serve as a, a positive cautionary tale, um, but does it raise your concern? You talked about your staff. What about you personally? Well, I have a wife who's an educator. I have a daughter who's in our high school. So certainly it's something that I do think about. There are inherent risks in a lot of things that we do, whether that's driving to school each day or going to a, a shopping mall. I think we've really taken for granted that going to school hasn't had a lot of risks in the past. That is not our, our current reality. I do believe that schooling on site is our best option in America in terms of the best quality education. that we can deliver. Now, that being said, we did survey our families. 15% of them told us in both the surveys we did over the summer that they would likely be interested in the virtual option. As we started our school year, 15% of our families did participate, are participating in that virtual opportunity that we have. I can see that shifting a little bit, perhaps, as we, we move into the school year. And we have some ability to shift people between those two formats. But again, a lot of our families made it very clear to us they want their kids to be on site with a, a teacher. We just need to make sure that as a school corporation, we can meet the needs of both of both types of families. Dr. Harold Olin, appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you.